So, I don't think you were expecting this for a first video, huh? <laughs> Who knew Chip Ganassi Racing was going to sell their team before 2022 to a brand new team that has Pitbull on it? So if you weren't aware of everything that was happening in NASCAR and everything just uh, in recent news because, well, you first off, I have a NASCAR channel, so a lot of you guys are coming in. And then also it's just a lot of people who are just seeing this for the first time and being like, whoa. But yeah, this is a perfect video for my first video here because, well, it's my first it's my first video. I get to talk about NASCAR. I get to talk about the business. I, and this is a perfect introduction for everybody that's coming over from my NASCAR channel. So it's perfect of like the stuff that I actually want to talk about because this is all business stuff. This is the stuff that I've been talking about in my classes that I graduated from. And this is just the stuff that is just insane that I never expected before 2022. So yeah, let's just get into it first. Uh, we got to talk about Chip Ganassi Racing because first off, they're not selling their IndyCar, IMSA, any of their Extreme E programs. It's just NASCAR. It's their headquarters in Concord, North Carolina that they're just selling to Trackhouse Racing after the 2021 season going into 2022. So that means Chip Ganassi Racing just loves winning so much that he's not winning anymore in NASCAR, so he's willing to sell his team. He only won 14 races in just 20 years of being in NASCAR, so it's kind of disappointing for what Chip Ganassi like, shows in other forms of motorsport and brings into NASCAR not so much. Like you have Scott Dixon winning all the time over at Chip Ganassi Racing in IndyCar. He recently won the championship just last year. And then you have IMSA where they're winning with Kevin Magnuson in just his first ever season in IMSA. Extreme E, I really haven't been paying attention to, but they, I mean, I bet they're going to be doing something over there. But in NASCAR, ever since Kyle Larson, they've barely won races, more than one race in a season. Like they had their success in 2010 with Jay McMurray and Juan Paul Montoya winning four races. And then you have Kyle Larson who came in and practically won a bunch of races back in 2016. But other than that, Ganassi really hasn't been much. It's And it's been surprising too because you expect that when you have like success in other forms of motorsport. So it's kind of not surprising in a way, but it was just unexpected that we would see this. Especially with the team that we're also going to be talking about, Trackhouse Racing. They just started their program this year. They leased out their charter for Inspire Motorsport, which is a lower team who is still building their way up, and I feel like they can. But this team has performed better than them. So it's not surprising that they're looking for a charter to actually call their own, and why not just buy an entire team? <laughs> but Trackhouse Racing, coming into this year... Really, nobody expected anything. Everyone expected 2311 to be the dominant team of the new teams. But instead, this team has been better than them. I mean, 2311, you expected JGR to have like so much success with that program. And especially with Bubba Wallace, you have Michael Jordan. And then you have Danny Hamlin, who's a minority owner. And you expected so much more out of that team. But instead, I think Trackhouse has been that filling in that hole a little bit. Because... We've expected more out of 2311 over Trackhouse. Trackhouse has just been that surprising team. I mean, you had Justin Marks, who's a first-year owner, and just decides to come in and just own a team with Ty Norris and somehow got Pitbull involved. I mean, Pitbull, the artist, future's looking bright for Trackhouse. I mean, everything over there is just been looking great. They have a journeyman driver with Daniel Suarez, who... Really hasn't been showing much a lot of NASCAR, and now is having like the best season of his life with a brand new team. I mean, nobody expected this out of Trackhouse. Nobody expected them to be contending for top fives. Everyone expected like maybe a few top twenties here and there, maybe just like running towards like the top twenty-five, expecting them to not be anywhere near the playoffs. But somehow they are, and they especially went in with a different business model than like everyone else because they want to move over to Nashville and uh, be like sort of like this Nashville-based team over like every single other team that's based around the Charlotte metropolitan area. So they've had different intentions of what what they wanted to do compared to every other team. And honestly, this is just proving that they are willing to stay and they're willing to be here for the long haul. And it's great for NASCAR, especially since like you see a lot of these smaller teams like not running like up with like 
up to par with a lot of these teams because it seems like it, it is like a top 30 and then everything else just drops off after that. So yeah, they get two charters now. I guess the rumors of Kurt Busch going to track house is true. Leaving Ross Chastain out in the dust, which I hate it for the guy. I mean, he could get the ride, especially if Kurt Busch ends up going to 2311 racing. They've won an experienced driver. He's really the only experienced driver outside of Ryan Newman, especially if this Brad Keselowski rumor gets true. And Kurt Busch is the guy that could be in for that ride over there. And Ross Chastain could be racing for track house. Who knows? But yeah, it's expected that this team is going to be a two-horse team. They're expected. They're, everyone's calling them a winner right away. They're not going to be winning right away. They, they're if they're not winning right now, I don't expect in a year's time that they're going to be winning. They're going to be consistently maybe contending for top tens, maybe even just being that team that could get into the playoffs easily. But just they're not going to be the team that's going to be winning week in and week out. That that's still going to be the top teams like Hendrick, who is dominating right now. You have Joe Gibbs, who still has a stout lineup. SHR, if they can get their shit together. And then if this whole thing with Brad Keselowski works good with Roush, maybe they could be there contending for wins and everything. I feel like I'm for, yeah, Penske. I'm forgetting about Penske. They're always there, somehow. Always in contention every single year. They'll be there as well. So you're going to be expecting this team to maybe be contending for that last playoff spot, but you're not going to be expecting this team to be winning like every single year. You might you might be able to get like a win out of this team, like out of a wild card race, but I don't see it like next year that they're going to be contending for wins. But yeah, no, that's a lot of like things going on with this team. I especially want to know how much they're buying it for because that is very important because if they're buying it for like a cheap price that like any other investor could get into. You're going to be looking at NASCAR being as the premier league of racing in America. Because if you see like overseas with how like you have like all these different owners going into premier league teams, it's because they're cheap. Sport franchises in America are expensive. They're billion dollar corporations, especially like in the NHL and the NBA and NFL. MLS is maybe like that one that everybody could get into easily, but it really depends how much Justin Marks is paying for Chip Ganassi Racing because if he's just paying the price of just two charters and a facility, like the charters are rumored to be at $10 million right now. If this comes out to be, let's say like $100 million or less than that, you might be seeing like some big investors coming into the sport. Like you already see Michael Jordan and Pitbull already buying into teams and being an owner of those teams. You might be seeing big investors come in now, especially if these numbers come out public, because it shows like how much these teams are willing to give up to get out of the sport. But if these come out to be like big numbers that aren't really like big in comparison to every other sport in America, it's going to be good. Because now you're going to be seeing like the value, you already see the value of the charters going up. Let's see the value of these teams go up. And let's see these actual values of what these investors are willing to pay for these teams. Who knows what can happen when you get these big investors with these big amount of value behind them into the sport. This could be big. And especially with seeing that a, a team like Chip Ganassi Racing is willing to give up their NASCAR program for whatever price Justin Marks has given up. It's going to be good. And you better be ready for NASCAR to be on top in these next few years because I'm ready and I'm wanting to see this. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on everything. Hopefully that wasn't over the place. I at least tried to get the script done this time out of the two times I tried recording videos. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope uh, this comes out well. I hope you guys enjoyed the content. If there's anything you guys want me to see or, like, change or – Suggest that like I should do for these videos. Just let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you next time.